quickly uh, go through what is that we have achieved till now. Last five weeks. Maria, I want you to come in front. Is that possible? Otherwise, you can also come front. So what is that we have done last five weeks? Anything that you could remember and use, reflect in your uh, term papers? We learned about policy. We learned about policy. One word. One word. Uh, how is this being made? How is it being implemented? Basically, a lot of theories, right? Don't worry. We will we will do a lot of uh, exercises and uh, Malaysian context. We will uh, discuss, you know, in the rest seven uh, seven weeks. Mm -hmm. So this today is just sixth week. The next week I will try and uh, address the history of social policy in Malaysia, mm -hmm. and then we get into actual, uh, you know, maybe we'll take some policies like housing policy, education policy, and maybe one Malaysia policy or whatever. You can choose, and we will discuss them in each week. So each week we will discuss one policy. That is what I thought. Every week we will discuss maybe uh, disability, women, anything, anything that you discuss. And uh, at the end we will try and see uh, uh, what is that you can contribute. So that is what I thought yesterday I was reflecting. Because almost we are done with the theory. This is the last week in a way and next week we will just discuss, we will we'll start discussing about, about Malaysian thing. So week one, it's better to go by weeks, you know. Week one, what is that we did? You can, you can look at your notebooks. Maybe this is the only chance that you look at your notebooks. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Types of policies. Remember, I think very interesting. Those are keep coming here. Redistributive policies or reactive policies or proactive policies. Okay, for you? Or you want to come friend? Oh, you want some? Uh, okay. Good. No problem. Yeah. Public policy. What is social policy? So something about you know policies. How do we define policy? What is our definition? What is the definition that we came up with? There's so many definitions. Policy is what policy does, or state you know governments does. Policy is what uh, which influences you know human behavior. Have we discussed about that? Policy is something that influences human behavior. How? If there are no policies in this in this government in this country, what would have been? No regulation, a lot of chaos, or people will self-govern. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. For example, there is no traffic policy. Do you think there will be a lot of accidents, or people just follow you know their own consciousness? With rules, there are a lot of accidents. So why we should have rules? Why we should have a traffic policy, which is anyway a lot of you know accidents and a lot of jams and students cannot come to the class on time, teachers cannot come, the technician is on the way still, he's not here somewhere. So why why should we have this then? Maybe if there is no policies, people have their own internal consciousness and guide better. Like in Nepal, most of the time the the street lights or the traffic lights do not work and they are not there in the first place. Even if they are there, they don't work. It has come. So, and uh, I don't think there are a lot of accidents. I mean, we can compare that, you know. A country with a good traffic policy, a good, you know, system and a country without this and see the, you know, traffic accidents or whatever and see whether there is any impact on these policies or policies on, on, on the way we are governing. So, but there is certain, uh, for example, um, there is a policy that, or there is a law that, you know, um, if you are doing, a, um, for example, what, a supermarket theft, you know, you go and you just put the things inside. What do you call it? Or there is a cameras and all that. We can always do this. And you ca get caught. If you get caught, then it is only one year jail. So people still do that. That's okay. It's not much time. I can still get away, you know, but I can earn a lot of money. Every night I can go inside Tesco and get a lot of things and sell outside, you know, I can still make money. Huh? So people might involve, but if it is a five years or ten years, or they'll cut your hands or something like that, what will people do? Do you think they'll steal? No, why? It's very scary. It's very, very, uh, very, uh, I mean, it's not worth doing. So that means, People are making choices. Okay, there is a policy, there is a law. 
but still sometimes people violate or try to violate because they see the cost and benefit okay if i violate this red light what happens you know people still you know violate sometimes i will not get caught there's no one here there's no you know a receipt or you know whatever you know what do you call the bill will not come there's no one there is no camera so you try to you know violate but there is a camera and there's a system in place the moment you are you know thanks uh, 70 or 80 kilometers whatever you you definitely get a ticket then then you may that means what policies are something that regulate our behavior to some extent it governs it governs okay still i i go on, i want to go basics governing again a big thing okay what else what is that policy is doing doing to us setting our behavior okay what else they are trying to protect us yes there are certain policies which are very protective okay they protect they regulate our behavior because we make our own judgments they govern what else i want you to believe or i mean whatever you believe you you say that i don't believe in all this i can live without any policy it's fine if you say that it is fine we are surrounded by policies okay what do we mean by that yeah so it's it's already in you know, a conditioning you you know okay what else so that is what i think we have achieved till uh, you know last 5 weeks week 2 huh welfare state. welfare state why why is that we are discussing welfare state today we will discuss uh, the 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 values and principles of policies you know that's why i'm trying to you know get there why why what is that we have been discussing and how it is connected to each other you know in second week we discussed about welfare state why what is this welfare state in certain countries you know i think it is doing very well in certain countries there is nothing called welfare state in certain countries there is no state what else we uh, we we discussed in that week what is welfare state types of welfare states ah huh? how many types of welfare states any idea at least 3 the residual model in certain states only when market and family is a failure the state will come in otherwise state it's not the state's duty to to look after those people residual the small you know segment of people which are taken care by the state when the market and family both are a failure you know there is no other way but to state to come in and to help these people you know so that is what residual welfare and the second one solidarity aha uh-huh. what is that this policy is like that we think we really knew but we forget though it touches you know every uh, aspect of our life but sometimes we still you know tend to forget because the, the, the theory behind this is is like that i mean there's so many people have written so much about this maybe it's something called uh, performance Uh, industrial performance model you remember there is a performance there is incentives there is rewards there is punishments for example traffic is a you know a such policy to me because there is incentives there is rewards there is punishments so there is a performance based you know welfare state a welfare state in which performances are taken care of or performances are recognized rewards are there punishments are there there is another one called maybe a uh the institutional uh, welfare where institutions uh, uh will take care so please go back to those some of these models i think they're very interesting so second week we spent some time on uh, state types of states welfare state the very idea of welfare state okay week 3 sorry mechanisms okay institutional mechanisms okay what is that we discussed okay arguments yeah why welfare you know okay types of welfare okay models of welfare mm mm-hmm. sources of welfare the very idea of welfare what is this welfare can you think of any society or state there is no welfare that also we'll discuss because it's it's again a 
when you are saying welfare, there are a lot of values attached to that and today we will discuss that. If you, if you are an American or you know, if you are in a uh, welfare system, people look at you differently it seems. Oh, this guy is on a welfare, on doles, you know, on state assistance, he is a lazy fellow, he is not working. I am working, I am working hard, I am paying taxes and the state is, you know, feeding him. There is a value attached to that. But what is welfare to us? Is it humanitarianism? Is it uh, solidarity or is it uh, uh, helping the, you know, uh, people who are in need? How do we understand welfare? Because we are all social workers again. What is welfare to us? I think that day very he, good discussions. Even I don't remember now, huh? Yeah, we okay, it's something to be free, or when it, is it? Uh, you know, there's a cost attached to this. How do we, you know, redistribute resources? How do we meet these costs? Where do we meet this cost? Whose welfare? What else? Can you see? Then week four. Again, we went back to, you know, the, the analysis or process, the analysis. How, okay, now we know what is policy, the importance of policy. We know the state. The state is what in, introduces or implements or makes these policies using welfare models. And now we know a little bit about how do we analyze, how do we understand, you know, who makes these policies and how do we understand. There is a linear model and there is a process model. And then we looked into some of these anal analytical, you know, tools, policy entrepreneurs, policy, uh, what is it, content analysis. What are those things that we, uh, we, we tried? Huh? Sorry? Ah, silly, silly, silly framework. Yeah. Context analysis, silly framework and a force field analysis. What are the forces? Do you remember? the positive and negative and then we come up with uh, uh, to make a how do we make a policy and then stakeholder, stakeholder analysis okay oh lot of things uh, extra rational model I forgot this what is this uh, uh, prisoner's dilemma okay the rational choice the, the idea is that uh, the policies or policy makers think people make rational choices, rational theory, you know. Uh, though, since people make rational choices, they, they want to make best out of the policies. And on that basis, you know, people want to come up with these policies anyway. Well, then, the week, policy recommendations, okay. The next week? Huh? Yeah, analysis and evaluation. Evaluation, I think I'll also touch again once, once again today. But I think we've spent some more time on this evalu I mean, analysis tools. What are those? There are two sects again. One is content analysis or uh, descriptive analysis and the other one is process. Within the descriptive there are a lot of subsects again. One is content just on the facts. The second one is choices. What choices are being made and how? Huh? Comparative and then there is something here. Oh, the same thing, good, good, good. Uh, historical and then a process. Okay, so we know a little bit about analysis, how people are analyzing these policies. Now I want to bring your attention to values and principles in social policy. Very interesting topic again. What is these values and principles and how do we understand them? Any idea? What is a value? Do we have values, human values? Social work values, Malaysian values. Huh? What is these values? Belief. Okay. What you believe. Okay. As a Malaysian, what you believe. As a woman, what you believe. As a teacher, what I believe in. As a social worker, what we believe in. Beliefs. Okay. What else? Value system. A lot of values come together. Welfare system. You know, a lot of welfare aspects putting into a system. Value system. What is Malaysian value system? When we say Malaysian values, cultural values, what is that? Okay, belief, huh? 
So policy values. Do do policies have values? Value also economic value, you know, social value, you know, aesthetic value. So we can understand that also. But what is this values and principles in social policy that we need to talk about? What kind of principles that we can think of when we are talking about a policy? Does policies, you know, framed out of certain principles? Like one Malaysia policy. What principle is behind this? Diversity. Very interesting, okay. What else? Maybe uh, old age pensions. What do you think? What is the value that behind that particular policy? Taking care of elders, care of elders is a Malaysian value. You know, we, we value our elders, you know, seniors who need you know, your help. Yes. So when, when their own family members are not able to help, maybe the state should come in. Yes. Islamic values or Christian values or religion. So what kind of you know, values and principles that might influence a particular social policy? Can you imagine? What kind of these, what are these values that might affect these social policies in, in any country? That's what we will discuss today. Do you think that will be interesting? And a lot of written on this again. How it goes? The arrows. The arrows. Okay. So this is what I thought. Why we should study social policy at all, I think it's very clear. We believe in this, we believe policies do make changes, policies contribute to the well-being, policies are important, social policies are important because it is through social policies we can help our clients or people in need. What do we mean by social policy? I think we also I think, uh, spent some time on this in the last few weeks. Whose social policy? Okay. Maybe this is a little, you know, we haven't discussed much. Okay, we know what is social policy, how this particular social policy is being made, maybe in Putrajaya or somewhere, but whose social policy is this? For old people, for women, for children, for whose policy? And are they consulted ever? Hmm? Uh, for the society? Uh -huh. What is welfare for some groups, maybe ill fare for others? Do you agree? Till now, have we discussed about that? What is welfare for some groups, maybe ill-fare, maybe it's not welfare for some others. Can you give me an example? Can you think of some example? Hmm? What is welfare to someone is an ill-fare. For example, those, uh, you know, condominiums or the escalation or whatever, they want to build a big, you know, condominium there. And um, yeah, it's good. They want to put all old people there. But there are certain people are removed from there. Maybe for them it's not, you know, uh, a good idea anymore. Anything else? Very good, very good, very good example. The, the, the malls, the hypermarket, you know, the big, you know, supermarkets coming and killing all the small scale industries or cottage industries. And we want to go to a mall because there's a lot of choice there. You can spend a lot of time. There's a lot of window shopping. There's a lot of opportunities. You can meet a lot of people. But at the same time, yeah. So a welfare might also have, yeah. So which I think we need to be, you know, very careful. When we talk about social policy, it's not that always, you know, very good and very you know beautiful and very you know uh, equal and all that no it's not it cannot be like that it's not a god you know so so that means what it's a good idea that we we believe in a social policies are required we believe that because it does good you know do goods to some people but at the same time it is also doing some injustice or some you know ill fare to some other so how do we you know then uh, then handle this you are fighting for, you know, women rights. But maybe, you know, in, in that, you know, uh, fight, maybe there is some people are, you know, uh, uh, not able to uh, uh, get the justice, even within the same women group. How do we then, then deal with this? What is this value dilemma? Can, 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 can you give some uh, uh, reflection on that? If values are beliefs, we believe social policy is good, right? But we also started believing now, or at least aware, that all policies are not good because it has also a, a negative 
site. So how do we then compensate that? Thinking that we will sit quiet, happily, no, no, anyway, you know, I'm not going to do this. If I do something good for them, someone else is getting, you know, uh, uh, not benefited. So why should I do this? Is that the way? Or you try and tackle this. How? Maybe certain principles will help? Self-respecting citizens must take responsibility for their actions. This is a statement I have just taken from this Pardana Leadership Foundation. You heard about that? I think this is a foundation which is documenting all prime ministers and their work and their leadership styles and their policies. You should go onto this site and see. You know, it's very interesting. So the, it's a, it's a non-profit organization. I don't know what is Pardana. I was trying to find out whose policies, you know, like, you know, Badavi and Mahathir and Nazib. I'm trying to understand their policies and their style, their values. Maybe Badavi believed something else and Nazib believed something else. Their very value itself is reflecting in the policies. So this Pardana Leadership Institute is documenting all that. It's very interesting for us to see. And it says, self-respecting citizens must take a responsibility for their actions. This is a very value-laden statement. What kind of value is, is, is you can see there? I don't know whether you believe in it or not. That's a different thing. But there is, it is trying to tell us certain values in this. What kind of values? Self-respecting citizens. What does that mean? So there are certain citizens who are not self-respecting themselves. Yeah? Or they're not even aware what is self-respect. Or they're not entitled to self-respect. Or their self-respect is taken away. Huh? Possible. So self-respecting citizens must take responsibility for, for their actions. That means you should be self-driven hmm? or our prime ministers are very self-respecting you know, people. That's why whatever they do, actually they do for the good of the people. Maybe sometimes there are unintended results, but still since they are self-respected citizens and they, whatever they do, they do in the, in the common good or, or it's, it's good for everyone. Is that, what, what is that we can understand from this statement? What kind of value that we can see in this? One, all citizens should be self-respecting. What do we mean by self-respect? Where do you get that self-respect? How do you get that self-respect? By sharing the culture, okay. What else? Self-respect. Very interesting concept, huh? For social workers again. Huh? Do we self-respect? Yes. But where is this comes from? Self-esteem or whatever you call it. Self-respect. Do everyone has, you know, can understand this? The homeless fellow or the one who is begging or the one, as you see, the refugees. What do you think? What do, what do you think about self-respecting in those cases? Must take responsibility for their actions. We'll come back to this. There's a lot of value thing that we can see here. That means self-respecting citizens have a lot of responsibilities and they have to take responsibility for whatever actions they are doing. Whether you're building a high-rise building or you're removing you know, you're, uh, you're treating refugees in a certain way or you're providing food, you're providing clothes or you're making business or a lot of profits. I don't, I mean, there's a lot of things here. National Professorial, uh, Professorial, Professorial Council. National Professorial, what is this? Professorial, Professor, prof, Professorial Council. Professorial Council. Mazlis Professor Nagare. This is easy. There is another website here. It is a think tank, you know, all professors, academics, they come together and they talk about, you know, uh, policies. October 11, 10 and 11, recently there was a conference in KL, you, I was uh, talking about that. They all came together, uh, led by our Professor Shiva, uh, he just came back. So that's why I just added this line today. There's a council, again, set up by the, by the, by the, by the, uh, the Prime Minister's office, I think. And all these professors come together and they discuss. And this particular uh, section discussed about well-being. Two days on that. And there are a lot of policy suggestions that goes into the, 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 the policy making. We don't know how much, 
but there are a lot of uh, professors come together and a lot of sections it seems. There's a section on well-being, there's a section on indicators, there's a section on leadership, many, many uh, things. People come together, especially academics, they, give, they talk, they discuss, they deliberate and then they give you know, certain ideas to the government so that these things will feed back into the uh, policy making. There's another interesting upside, you can also see this. Why I'm talking about all this? Why, why you know, our government should come up with this? That means it really values the academic inputs, it recognizes the academic in inputs or it is just another conference and make money and you know some speeches. So it, today also it was there in the newspaper, you can see that. What is the value that uh, uh, a policy maker will attach to academics? Do, do they really believe us? When I said us, I am also considering myself into academics or do they really uh, believe in civil society, NGO consultations? There is academics, there is NGO, there is market, there is World Bank, there is Asian Development Bank, there is uh, ASEAN, there is a lot of things happening and how one government can really, you know, take all these things into one thing. For example, human trafficking, there is a lot of research happening, they give some suggestions. Even, you know, people working with human traffic, the NGOs, the civil society, they give some suggestions. Media gives some suggestions, you know, a lot of inputs. So how this Ministry of uh, Social Welfare can take all that and put into one policy so that everyone is happy. All their, you know, all the, all the, you know, uh, uh, everyone's, uh, you know, uh, uh, inputs have been taken care of. Is that possible? What happens? For example, how this human trafficking policy can actually reflect all the sectors, including academics, social workers, media, NGOs, human trafficked people, them, I mean, their own, you know, voices, police, law. Look, you know, remember stakeholder analysis? So how do we really, you know, for example, do you think uh, the kind of suggestions the police will give will be the same from the, from the academics or it will be different? Different. Why? The nature. Uh, the, nature. the values are different. Uh -huh. So whatever suggestions they give, there's something with their value thing, you know. I'm an academic, you know, I'm more into theories and frameworks and modeling and this and that, you know, and maybe I try to theorize the human behavior or human, you know, behavior there. But what is that police does? Huh? They might go basis on? must be punished, punishment based, you know, punishment is the, you know, the best answer, okay, they focus on uh, more on punishment, not on uh, maybe a rehabilitation or something less, maybe a civil society or an NGO working with human trafficking, what kind of suggestions would they give, justice, human rights, maybe, you know, human worth and dignity of a person, fair chances to, you know, reintegrate, so each one of us, bring our own values, that's what I'm trying to, you know, bring in, you agree. So if that is the case, a particular policy will have a lot of values, then how do we, how, how do we, you know, manage that? That's what is, whose policy, some people are asking whose policy is this? Some people are asking what we mean by social policy, some people are asking why should we study social policy at all? Some people are saying that, you know, welfare is good for some and ill for some. So a lot of values here coming in. This is what uh, Mazilis Professor Nagara, the Professor Royal Council, you can see their website. The relationship between social welfare and economic performance, okay, maybe we'll spend a little bit on this. What do you think about this? The relationship, don't read the other ones, the relationship between social welfare and economic performance. Social welfare is equity and economic performance is efficiency. Certain people, as you said in the debate, you know, we should not promote a lot of welfare because there's a lot of cost or it, it increases a lot of lazy people. The productivity will come down. So that means they're talking about economic performance, not welfare. But there are certain people, they're saying that welfare is needed. Welfare actually triggers economic performance, you know. If there are, uh, uh, if there is a company and only money and, uh, you know, uh, will not help. You need other welfare mechanisms also for the for the employ I mean uh, for the people who are working there, so that your productivity will be higher. 
So there is always a relationship between social welfare and economic performance. What do you think? Which one should be promoted? Both? Both. Or you have a preference? For example, no, it is only the social welfare which is the answer or it is the economic performance will take care of all the you know, problems of our society. So let's not worry about that. What do you think? Huh? Hmm? Both? Since you have seen that. If you have only one choice to choose, which one you will choose? Why? There is no money. What welfare you will do? Huh? Social, sorry? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Economics. Look, now it's coming. It's hard to do welfare when there is no economic performance. It's hard to do economic performance when there is no welfare. It's interrelated. Uh -huh. But which one you prefer? Where you will put your value, that's what I mean. Where you will put your heart, where you will put your belief. In your case, see economic performance is a must. I want to do welfare. But if economic performance is must, you are putting there. We can see that. Possible. Maybe, maybe some minute, if you become a minister, that is what it will happen. So, that's what by Dan Mahathir, okay. But why is that that economic performance is not uh, the same now? What is the problem? Just because Mahathir is not here? <laughs> or there's some other problem? Yeah, because economic performance is influenced by so many factors. Okay. So like okay. Okay. So, but, but the, the underlying uh, reason for it, when we want to improve uh, the, the social welfare of the people, the economic level need to be improved. People also thought like that, you know, trickle down theory. You create a lot of wealth. It automatically trickles down, you know. You have thousand rupees, you start spending, so some people will buy. But it didn't happen. You know, you have thousand rupees, you earn more, you earn more. Actually what happened is you started, you know, taking more from the poor than giving back to them. You, know, you build a mall now, you know, you have a lot of money, you, you are investing in uh, refineries, you are investing in malls, you are investing in industries, you are investing in uh, you becoming rich at the cost of, you know, there's so many thousands of, you know, poor, uh, poor people. Your money didn't really trickle down. Maybe that is the same case here. Economic performance, yes, but there are a lot of divorce cases, there are a lot of you know, accidents, there are a lot of crime, there's a lot of, you know, uh, um, people are not happy. So, social security is, maybe you can, you can see that where I am, you know. I also have to tell you my own value beliefs. Whatever I'm teaching, remember, you know, there is certain thing here working here and influencing that, that thought. You don't need to, you know, take that, that's why. And I also have to be very clear as a teacher, maybe there are certain things that I believe in, macro social work, I believe in that. And my, whatever teaching, you know, actually influenced by that, you know. That's why I really like policies, I really believe in that, you know. So social security is unfavorable to economic development, there are certain people, you know. When you talk about social security, it's not favorable to economic development, so let's not talk about that. First, economic development, later we'll talk about social security, social welfare, whatever. Social equality is a, form, is a form of luxury to be promoted only in countries which are already rich. What do you think about this? Social equality, you remember what is equality and what is equity, right? Social equality is a form of luxury to be promoted only in countries that are rich, only in Europe, US, UK. What do you think? Huh? In other places, you can't achieve this anyway. You can't really be equal. You can't really provide resources for everyone. Equity, we are not discussing. At least equality also, it's difficult. So you can't think of that. It's only for the rich. What do you think? These are the statements I have taken from the literature. Another value attached statement. All this. What do you think? Today we will only discuss this, not much, you know, graphs and all that. We are talking about values, thing that we can't really, you know, uh, define. Your value is very different from mine. Which country will uh, give more opportunity or job opportunity? Mm -hmm. Which country? So that there will be some social equality. 
So what about poor countries? There is no equality? They should not talk about that? You are right, there are a lot of job opportunities, they can create a lot of job opportunities, so there is some at least equality when it comes to employment and some, you know, benefits. You, you can agree with this and you, you, you need not to agree with this. What do you think, my friend? My friend here, looking very seriously. Huh? Difficult, huh? What is these values? Why are we are talking again? I am coming back. Are you clear? Why are we talking about this? Social policy. This is the last class, I mean in the sense. Tomorrow, next week, we will talk about the Malaysian social welfare policy. So, theory finished with this. <laughs> Happy, huh? What is this values? Why are we talking? To me, policy is nothing but all values. Huh? Social work is what? Let's say social work. You are familiar with that. Social work is what? It's nothing but values. You agree or not? Agree? What are the social work values? Hmm? Huh? Sorry? Confidentiality, okay. It's a principle but also value. What else? Acceptance. Non judgmental. Human justice, equity. All these values guide our work, right? So, what are the values guide social policy? If you don't think about that, if you are not able to understand this, the kind of work that we are doing, the kind of analysis that we are doing may become, you know, to ill fare to some people. It will be there, but we can reduce always, that's what I mean. So we really need to understand this value base or value system, principles, whatever you call it, even when it comes to social policy. It's like social work. Social work guides by values. So social policy also guide, guided by values. What are these values, you know, guides these policies? Okay, like different policies, they have different values. Okay, I agree now. So what can, what, give me an example. Mm -hmm. Policy for dis disability is different. Old people. Like what is the value, what differences you can see? But tell us the actual difference. When it comes to old people, how do we think? What is that, you know, what is that guides you? Whether it's economics, whether it's humanity, or is it anyway they're useless, why to spend money on them? They're all done. That's the value part of it. Okay. So there are people think that it's like they're done, you know. There's no point spending a lot of money on them. Rather spend that money on children yeah. who has a lot of future. So the value that they're trying to put there is appreciating the... So certain people put a lot of value there. Old people, maybe, you know, a lot of value yeah. because you still think that they, are, yeah. they have contributed a lot. They deserve a, a legitimate place and they have done, a, you know, a lot more contribution to the country. So they deserve a lot more help. But there are certain people might think that okay, they have done something fine, I agree, but now that we have a lot of you know, poor children, they are the future of the city or country, so let's put all these resources here. They are also legitimate. So what value that you are attaching to, which issue is, is, the, is the core now? Right? You are right. You know, the disability policy is guided by differently than the you know, old age policy. But can we go a little bit more? Why is that we are thinking like that? What is, what is making us to think like that? Or a social policy or policy makers. Why do they give different value to different policies? Why? Different needs. Now I think we are coming there. We have different needs. Okay. Different needs and different interests. Uh -huh. So that the kind of values that we attach also will be different. Naturally will be different because Again, we go by these needs and interests, okay? Anything else that you, you think? What is that guide, you know? What kind of values guide social policy now? Tell me. Like social work, humanity, justice, equity, confidentiality, whatever. What are this, this side? Can you tell me some, some, what are these values? Huh? 
Social well-being? You want to discuss with her and tell us? Okay. <laughs> what are the values guide social policies? Equality and, Equality and equity. Okay. Some people believe in equality and they try to put that. Some people believe also in equity and they also try to do that. Okay, what else? If you can answer this, I think class is over. Uh, I don't need to go to show other slides. Hmm? Social well being, okay. Some people put a lot of you know, uh, priority on well being and they come up with that kind of policies, okay. Some people on maybe you know economic performance so they put a lot of you know emphasis on that what else political liberty and social integration of the poor were causes of economic development what do you think this hmm? remember we are trying to understand values what values people attach to these policies that's why policies are different. Mahathir time, the same old age policy was different now in Nazib's time. Why? Why to change? If that is a good, it should have been continued, but it still change. Because people attach different values according to their needs and interests. Look at this, political liberty and the social integration of the poor. Political liberty and social integration. Two key words here. Political liberty and social integration of the poor are the causes for economic development. Look at this. Do you believe in this? Uh, there is a theory behind this and people are proving this. It is not my statement. Huh? I have not given the reference here but I have this where I have taken. I think this is uh, from, um, I have those papers here. I can show you this. Political liberty and social integration of the poor were causes as well as actually the consequences for economic development. That means, for example, Ma Malaysia achieved economic development. That means it is the political liberty and the social integration of the poor which led to the economic development of Malaysia. You agree? How? I don't know about Palestine. Huh? What do you think about Palestine? Mm -hmm. It is the moving factor. Okay, what is political liberty? And social integration. These are the two things of the, if the poor has a political liberty, that means they can wise out, they can choose, they can, uh, they can deliberate, they can, they can argue, they can, they can share, you know, they have all the liberty to, you know, to contest, to, to vote, to, uh, to participate in decision making, whatever you call it. And social integration, maybe I don't need to explain, is the, of the poor which led to the economic development. Maybe there are no more strikes, there is no more, you know, they became productive force, they became working, you know, class, you know, there is no more, you know, bloodshed, you know. Maybe that is the kind of, you know, idea. So it is the social integration, political liberty of the poor has led to the economic development. So you invest on the poor and for their political liberty and social, you know, integration so that it will lead to economic development or economic performance. One theory, there is, an, there, there, there's a, there is a, I mean the value attached here is on poor. No, look, they're poor but they're human beings, they have capacity, they can produce, they can be a productive economic force. So, you know, work towards their political liberty and social integration so that they become active in the economic, you know, space and you can achieve, otherwise you will always be poor. What kind of values here that you see here? Almost one hour, huh? Hmm? What kind of value you see here? Poor are bankable, you know, you remember that? Banking, poor are bankable. There's another statement comes from Muhammad Yunus from Bangladesh. He received a Nobel, Nobel uh, what a peace prize. Poor are bankable. What is bankable? You can give loans to them. It's not the rich who actually pay. 
It is the poor who pays. So give them loans, give them, you know, support. They are the ones bankable. But our general idea was poor. They can't pay. They don't have collateral. They don't have, you know, anything. They, how can, you know, a bank can invest on them? But his experiment is poor are bankable in Bangladesh. Small loans, microcredits. And they pay 100%, you know, uh, payback uh, uh, history. You got a revolution, you know, in that, in that sector, microcredit. So these are some of the values that we, we, we have in humanity, in well-being, in whatever, in old days, disability, the whole welfare, you know, I think leads to the kind of social policies that we see now. You, you, you see some sense in that? You believe now? So why should we talk about values? What kind of values, you know, are behind certain social policies? Maybe it will be very clear once we go a little bit, you know, ahead. Any questions? Okay, look at Netherlands, for example. This is what they believe in. Hmm? The social legislation of the Netherlands, small country, huh? not even like Penang, I think, is one of the most extensive in the world. The main principle of the system is that all members of society must be able to play an equally active role in the society. This is what their value statement. This is the value that they, the, the, the Netherlands government, the Dutch government follows. And you can see the kind of legislation that they have. It's very complex in the world, it seems. And the rationale is that, what? All the members of the society must be able to play an equally active role in the society. Disabled, blind, aged, children, women, refugees, migrants, asylum seekers, whoever it is, uh, bureaucrats, media, you know, academics, uh, working class, members of the society must be able to play an equally active role in the society. How can you make that? How can you make all the members in Malaysia uh, play an equally and active role? An equal and active role. If that is what our statement, what does that mean? then what will be the social policies look like? Hmm? So basically, they, 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 here I am explaining this. The social rights and duties, however, are the two sides of the same coin, which means that those who are capable to work must work, among others, because participating as a working member of society is the best manner to avoid social exclusion. You know, if you want to be, ex if you, if you don't want to be excluded, then work. When you work, then you are working in a, you know, uh, in, a, in, a, in a space where you meet others and you are not excluded. And you are contributing, you are productive. Certain groups, however, may need support in finding their place in the labor market. Those groups include older people, the disabled, families on low income, ethnic and other minorities, the homeless, and those with addiction problems need special support. But we can make them work, we can bring them into, into, into a workforce, but certain extra assistance. If that is the belief of a government, what kind of social policies that you can think of? Can you guess? This is what they believe in, right? What they believe? All members in the society must be able to play an equally active role in the society. How do you play an active role? By working. By working, you are not socially excluded. But certain people cannot work. So you give special assistance for them to come into the workspace. You see the logic? All people should have play an active role. For that, all people should have an access to work. When, once you are working, you are not socially excluded. But certain people cannot come into the work because they have li limitations and you support them so that they also can come into the work and then they will not be socially excluded and they will also have equal opportunities. What is this? What are they saying? They are saying anything new? And this is what their social policy legislation. Dutch, very an interesting case actually, many people refer to this. Simple. All people should have, should be able to play an equally role. Look at that. Is that possible? What do you think? What do you think in the Malaysian context? What value these guys are playing here? There is something guiding them, right? 
After all, social policies come from where? From God? Huh? Where do these social policies come from? To, from you and from me and from, the, from, from all of us. So there is a basis. You know, humans are behind this. Social policies by humans for humans. Let's say, you know, to me, you know, that's what it looks like. So, whatever we believe reflects there. So this is what Dutch. All people can play an active role. And it is the government's duty to make, create those spaces for everyone to play an active role. And what do you mean by creating spaces? And you can think of what kind of policies should be there. Maybe it's diversity policy or you know, migrants policy or disability policy, whatever. Always connecting to make them work, not dependent. So that is what you can see there. They're not talking about assistance. They're not talking about, you know, uh, dependency here. You are disabled, I agree, but I'll make sure that you'll also can work. So I make sure that in your workspace or you will get to work what you can actually do. So the social policy do not see disability as an issue, but actually creating opportunities for disabled to play an active role. Where they're putting the value? on the disability or, or how this disability can actually be minimized by creating you know, spaces or creating a new opportunities, by creating you know, special provisions. That is what it is. So they're not giving 100 rupees or whatever for the disabled, but they're actually doing creating spaces for them to work. So it's easy to give 100 rupees or 500 rupees per month, cash or whatever, okay, you be happy, you know. They're not doing that. Rather, they're putting that money into creating a space where all people actually uh, can play equal role. All people will have equal working opportunities. So what do you think about this? Do you see the, the difference? Hmm? Where are we putting our money, for example? We'll come to that. So countries, when they design social policies, these are the values that actually guide. Though it's very... It's, it, 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 we can't see them very clearly, but it is there. Look at US, for example. The next example. So each country, now I'm, I'm, I'm bringing some country examples because social policies are different in different countries. And, and we, we also understood or read the types of states, the types of democracies. So social policy is not just small thing. Can you see it's very complex now? Huh? It's very complex. It's, that one document is, is, is a lot of, you know, uh, things inside. And that's the beauty of this now. Hmm? And social workers use that document to help others. So it's very easy to run down a social policy, criticize a social policy. I think, but now, we will start appreciating or start understanding the very nitty gritties of you know, these policies, how are these policies are being made, what values are behind that, what principles do they follow. Maybe they are, the, 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 the value that they believe may not working, but still, you know, they, there is a value behind that. That's what the point I'm trying to you know, tell here, so that we, we appreciate at least uh, a particular social policy and the effort behind that. To see these social policies differently, Whenever you come the next time, hopefully. That's what my aim here, that's what my aim here. What I'm trying to do here today is, look at those values. What, what values are driving a particular social policy? And then try and understand, so that you will be able to much appreciate, you will be able to understand, you will be able to analyze, and you will be able to contribute. I'm sure it is, it's possible. Look at USA, for example. The now, the USA will tell us why I'm bringing this USA or American case. The values that we attach also will change over time that we see in Malaysia, for example. You know, the same thing happened in, 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 in US also. For example, in 1935, the President Franklin Roosevelt signed the Social Security Act, which is very important act in the whole welfare, you know, uh, 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 activities. A legislation centered on an explicit dichotomy between social insurance and social assistance. The US Social Security Act, even today it is very famous, it's very one of the very important things. Later so many countries actually looked into that experiment and have taken that. 
your IC number and all actually social security, you know, ideas, you know. Uh, in India, we don't have that, for example. Still now, they couldn't do that. So, in 1935, when this act came in, how this act came in? Our legislation centered on an explicit dichotomy between social insurance, that is benefits tied to the contributions, and social assistance, means tested benefits. Can you understand these two words now? Social insurance and social assistance. So-so, yes, I, I am aware of that. So-so is, is a social... Hmm? It's a social insurance, right? You have to contribute to that. So people have to contribute to that. So it's a kind of... A, a very social assistance is means tested. In the sense, you are poor, okay, you are, you are eligible. You are old, you are eligible. You are disabled, you are eligible. So they have a dichotomy or they have, they have recognized social insurance is different from social assistance. So, when they came up with this act, Social Security Act, you can see that. Very clear definitions about uh, uh, social insurance and social assistance. Who should be given assistance and how people can be insured. Social security, ah, now another th third term now. Actually, it, it was the Economic Security Act. Later, they have changed into Social Security Act. There's a lot of history on there. You can maybe uh, go on to see this. But when you say Social Security, what does that mean? Is it social assistance or is it social insurance? Or both? It looks like both. But it, it actually, in US case, it highlights only one. Social insurance now. But initially, it was also on social assistance. But now, we know US is a capitalist country. There's a lot of you know, value attached to the achievements, self, individualism, productivity, you know. There are a lot of values there, American values, you know. They, they, want, they give a lot of, even leisure time, they, they spend productively, it seems. A lot of value to the achievement, work, time, productivity and all that. So now, it's more on social insurance. How, how it happened? Why it happened in a particular country like US? You know, how many years? 60 years? And they give a lot of examples there. For example, if you are... It looks like a little becoming difficult, you guys. Then, then, then we will stop here. You know, basically, I think the point here is social policies do have values. If you agree that, I can, we, can, we can maybe, you know, um, we, we, I can stop giving these examples. Social security? Number, yeah, exactly. But what benefits are you receiving with that? Hmm? Nothing? Yeah, you, maybe you never thought about it, you know. 1942, yeah, you can see how this social security, you know, the very concept of social security or social security number or social security uh, production floor initiatives, there's so many things. This 1942, the publication of International Labour Organization, a book approaches to social security, help diffuse the term elsewhere around the world. Why I'm telling this? The very idea, the very term called social security was famous or diffused only in 1942, after the ILO has come up with this book. Social security. Today, I think it's everywhere. I mean, many countries they use this word, social security. But sorry, what is the question? What is this? What is the difference between social welfare and social security? For example, tomorrow. Ministry of Social Security, the same ministry, social welfare, now uh, tomorrow they will change the name to social security. So uh, what does that mean? Yeah, it's interesting. What does that mean? <laughs>